one of our viewers wanted us to ask you about this. Dee Thomas has been in touch to say, this is a point of principle. Regardless of the amount of arms supplied, the act of stopping the delivery carries a much, much stronger no, it's message. It's undoubtedly true. We could, if we chose to, make a sort of political message and say we're going to take that political step. Now, the last time I was urged to do that, just a few days later, I didn't do that, and just a few days later, there was a brutal attack by Iran on Israel, including 140 cruise missiles. It was not sort of, you know, tiny drones, huge cruise missiles blasting into Israel. And I think it would have sent entirely the wrong message. It would have been a very unwise move. So, you know, as we stand here today, I think there is a better answer, which mm -hmm. is, you know, Hamas must take the hostage deal. You get the pause in the fighting. You build a ceasefire out of that. But I think actually, just to simply announce today, we're going to change our whole approach to arms exports rather than go through our careful process. It would strengthen Hamas. It would make a hostage deal less likely. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be the right approach. So is President Biden wrong to take that approach then? He, he is in a totally different position. They but are the a principle. massive state. It, to them, it's not so much a principle because actually it's really, they are a massive state supplier of weaponry. Mm -hmm. They're involved in the IDF uh, tactical and strategic thinking. It's a totally different situation. And I, I'm not really, you know, what I want to do is make sure British policy has impact. You know, we've got three things we want to achieve. We want to stop the fighting, get the hostages out, and remove the Hamas threat. We want to get aid into the Palestinian mm -hmm. people in Gaza. And we'll talk and, about and that. And we crucially want the long-term solution of the two-state solution and we'll that we'll, Nadine we'll was about, talking about. And we'll talk about and aid what I measure is, you know, are we making progress on those things? Now, it's frustrating. Not enough aid is getting through, but we're hammering away every day on open the port of Ashdod, get this pier built off the, off the Gazan beach, switch on the water uh, and the fuel back into Gaza, get the 500 trucks a day. That's what we're doing, hammering away on that, because that will make a real difference. I'm, I'm not really interested in the sort of message sending. I'm interested in what can we do to maximise the British pressure and the outcome that will help people in their lives, including getting the hostages, including British nationals, by the way, released. Uh, you seem very frustrated by what's happening. It is frustrating because, you know, I, I am a supporter of Israel, I'm a supporter of the two-state solution, but I'm a massive believer in the importance of getting aid through to the Palestinian people. We had some big promises from Netanyahu a few weeks ago, uh, and we've seen some changes that are positive, but not enough. See, and so I was on the phone then. to Ron Derma, who's sort of Netanyahu's right-hand man in the cabinet, for an hour on Friday, making these points. It's not all bleak, though. I mean... Mm. On the issue of the treatment of detainees, I went to see Netanyahu. I said it wasn't good enough, that we needed to have a proper independent system for inspecting and regulating, and the Israelis have announced they're now going to do that. So we shouldn't overstate what Britain can get done, but nor should we understate it.